if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about phosphorus cycle and sulfur cycle. In the previous video, we talked about carbon cycle. And in all cycles, what we have to remember is the source and how we are, we are going to use it or living organisms are going to use it. And how does that element move in the living, that is in the biotic uh, community. So if we talk about phosphorus cycle the source is the rock so in the rocks this phosphorus is present and the usable form is phosphate so now what happens is this phosphate or this uh, phosphorus which is in uh, the rocks it slowly gets dissolved in the water body and from the water body then it can be absorbed by the plants in the form of this phosphate now where do we need it where exactly in our body we have this phosphorus so if we have to uh, just list out few important places one is nucleic acid like dna and RNA. In DNA and RNA, the nucleotides, we have pentose sugar, nitrogen base, and phosphate, that is phosphoric acid. So, here in nucleic acid, we need it. ATP, the energy currency, the molecule which provides energy, has tri is triphosphate. So, without this, we would not have this uh, energy giving molecule. Then there are certain coenzymes like NADP, FADP. This P stands for phosphate. Then when we or when our plasma membrane is made, it is of phospholipids. So this phospho is again the same. So we need this phosphate almost everywhere because if our plasma membrane is to be made then phospholipid is the uh, basic constructing molecule along with proteins so if this is not there our growth is going to get affected if atp is not there all active processes will get affected and if dna rna are not properly formed because of deficiency or absence of phosphate then that molecule that a molecule which is our genetic material or the molecule which helps in protein synthesis these molecule or their formation will be affected so how does this move this phosphate in rocks the phosphate dissolves in water and when it is dissolved it is present in the form of phosphate. This is the usable form. From this or this water, this is in the water body because this is the dissolved one. From here, it will be taken by the plants. Now, how do the plants take it? The water which is supplied. This water is coming from this underground water tube well or the underground water table. So from here it is going to reach. Uh, the water uh, the plants plants are going to use this phosphate to make their plasma membrane for their cell division for their active processes for their enzymatic activities and this phosphate becomes a part of this plant body now from the plants it is going to move into the animals how would it reach the animals again it would go in the form of food so it reaches the animals. Death and decomposition of both. That is when plants and animals die. Heat. 
here there are decomposers which are involved. So when we talk of biotech, we have to talk about the producers, consumers and the decomposers. So all three are included here. So this is with the help of decomposers and all this phosphate comes back into the soil. So this is a very simple cycle which we have to uh, understand. Things which we have to remember in phosphate cycle are same. What is the main source? It is in the rocks. In which form is it available for the plants or it can be used is phosphate. And where do living organisms need this phosphate? And how is this phosphorus moving in the living world? So this is a very simple cycle. Sulfur cycle is also very simple. Sulfur cycle, again, sulfur is also available in the soil in the form of sulfates. So it is used as sulfate. It will be dissolved in water. So this will go in with the help of some bacteria also this can be used. And it will be used by plants. Where do we need this sulfur? There are certain amino acids which are sulfur containing. So plants are going to make sulfur containing amino acids and these amino acids will be used to make the proteins. Now these proteins are in the plant and from here they would go to animals in the form of food and the reverse is the same death and decomposition. of living organisms would return that sulfate back into the soil. So both these cycles, phosphorus cycle and sulfur cycle are pretty much same. But if we have to compare carbon cycle and phosphorus cycle, there are two main differences. In case of carbon cycle, there is atmospheric input which is available. In case of phosphorus cycle, there is no atmospheric input. Because these are the two cycles which are normally compared. One is carbon cycle and phosphorus cycle. First is in case of carbon cycle, there is atmospheric input. Though when we talk of only carbon cycle, we have seen that majority input is from the ocean. Atmosphere plays a very negligible role. It has only 1% carbon or carbon dioxide. But there is atmospheric input. In case of phosphorus, there is no atmospheric input. This is one major difference between the two cycles. The second is carbon cycle when we talk of there is respiratory movement or gaseous exchange. Of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide whereas in case of Phosphorus, there is no gaseous exchange. It is always in the form of a solution or phosphate which, which is dissolved in water. Only that can be used. And if it has to move from one organism to the other, from plant to animal, it has to go in the form of some organic compound. It cannot just be taken as gaseous carbon dioxide as plants do or it cannot be released as gaseous as we do while we respire. So on these two points, uh, carbon and phosphorus cycles differ a lot. And phosphorus and sulfur cycle are pure sedimentary cycle. And some of this phosphorus and sulfur, it remains blocked either in the form of compounds, salts, rocks, shells, these places. 
and we have seen where we need this phosphorus. We can add, the list can be made even longer. We need it for teeth formation, for bone formation. There are so many places where this phosphorus is needed. So, where we need it, how we get it, and then how it moves. So, we have talked of three elements so far, carbon cycle in the previous uh, video, and here phosphorus and sulfur. Now, in the next part, we'll talk about nitrogen cycle.